the developer of Oceanhorn, which is another Zelda clone. <laughs> Seems like Zelda yeah. clones are the theme of the episode so far. Um, mm-hmm. It's a, a game called Oceanhorn Monster of the Uncharted Seas or something like that. And yeah. in terms of style, it looks like a Pixar-ized version of Wind Waker. It's the best way I can put it, you know, because it's not cell shaded but it still has that look. And it almost has like a Pixar look to the uh, the graphics, you know what I mean? Mm, yeah. um, but the game plays a bit differently, of course. You know, it's more of a overhead type game. It's not in third person. It's not a huge sweeping epic game like Zelda is, but it does have a lot of similarities at the same time. Well, this game came out for various platforms. You know, we have it available on the PC, we have it on the PS4. I think the Xbox One has it. You can get it on iPhone. All kinds of stuff, right? So right. this game is available on a lot of different platforms. But what's really interesting about this is that it recently came out for the Nintendo Switch. Okay? Yeah. So it only came out on the Nintendo Switch a couple of months ago, back in June. And they've already announced, the developer of the game had tweeted out, and this is according to them, we don't have any other news source that go by, digital sales are really hard to find news on and whatnot. But according to the developer, the Nintendo Switch version of Oceanhorn has sold more than every other version of the game combined. Which is just insane. Because this game, like I said, it's out on the PS4, it's out on Steam, it's out on Xbox One. They even have it on the Wii U. So it's not like the Nintendo audience didn't know this game existed, because it was out on the Wii U. And iPhone. And it's outsold all of those combined. Which is just (laughs) insane, especially considering that the Switch version just came out a couple months ago. These other Uh systems have had, like, a huge head start on it. So I'm really, I'm just kind of flabbergasted. Why is it selling so much better on the Switch? <laughs> I think it really, I think it kind of boils down to a lot of people. Well, it's like we already mentioned before about it being a Zelda clone. And I think another thing it boils down to is a lot of people, at least it seems like nowadays, I mean, obviously you have the console Zeldas as well, but I mm-hmm. guess also a lot of people really associate Zelda with handheld and yep. looking looking at it from a certain perspective, it almost looks like a link between worlds, but set in the Wind Waker universe, if you will, kind of, sort of. Right. And um, I have the game on PS4. I actually did a stream of it, as a matter of fact, on my channel as well. I have it on PS4. I haven't completed it or anything like that. But a funny thing is the second one that's in development kind of looks like Skyward Sword. <laughs> yeah, I noticed that they, yeah. they've changed the perspective. It looks like they're going a little more of an adventure kind of game with that one. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Uh, Which, I'm sure with the first game, obviously the budget probably wasn't as big and all this good stuff, you know. I'm sure the development team's bigger. They can probably do more grandiose things now. But, okay, I have a couple of counter-arguments. First of all, the PS4 has sold over 60 million systems. The Switch is sitting... The Switch is only... I mean, the Switch has been selling great. But at least according to the numbers we have so far, it's sitting at around 6 million. So... The PS4 has a 10 times system advantage, and that's not counting the hundreds of millions of iPhones and gaming PCs and everything else that's out there too, right? So it's just really weird. And then, of course, like you mentioned, the whole Zelda thing. Well, a counter argument to that is, well, you can play Zelda um, Breath of the Wild on the Switch. Why do you need another Zelda kind of game? Whereas (laughs) on PS4 your options are a bit more limited. On Xbox One, I can't think of hardly any games that play like Zelda, so it seems like a game like this would gravitate towards it. So, Mm. I mean, do you think it's simply a matter of the audience that has the systems and that maybe the audience is just a lot more prone to Zelda kind of games and that's why they're buying it on the Switch? Um, And you mentioned the handheld thing. Well, then why is it not selling that great on the iPhone? You think maybe the controls like oh it's just touch screens like you know obviously and yeah I can't stand touch screens I made a rant about that too yeah <laughs> I made a rant about touch screens on my channel I just I couldn't take it anymore. 
I, I really you. don't know, honestly. I'm not necessarily sure why it is that it would be selling so much on the Switch. I think another reason is obviously, yeah, the PS4 is going to end up uh, have selling more than than the Switch because the the Switch is a is a newer system. But then again, at the same time, um, I guess another thing is when the Switch came out, a lot of people were really wanting to have. Uh, obviously more games come out on the Switch and maybe this was one of them that just really caught people's eye and they're like, okay, I really do need to get this. I would love to be able to not only play this at home but then take it home, uh, you know, out with me and play it out at a restaurant or something or at a ball game or, you know, or or whatever the case may be. And I I guess it's probably just one of those games that people really gravitate towards like you could do it at home or you could do it on the go and, 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 you know, that's that's my thought on it anyway. Right. I can't really get into it. You know, that makes, that probably makes the most sense because like I said, this is an indie game. I'm sure they probably don't do a lot of marketing for this kind of game. And so store exposure is everything. You know, you can't get the game physically. So people, well, you you can technically, there is the limited run release, but that's another story entirely. No, yeah, that's another story Uh, entirely. But uh, you you can't just go into GameStop or Walmart or something like that and pick this game up off the shelf. So people don't have exposure that way. On the things I mentioned, like PS4, iPhone. Well, those platforms, like iPhone, there's over a million apps. Unless you knew to look for this game, you're probably not going to stumble upon it. And then PS4 is a similar situation. Not nearly as many apps, but... There's still thousands of games available that you can download on the PS4. Mm. So again, you have to know what you're looking for, or it has to be a game similar to something you're already looking at to even know it's there, right? Yeah. Xbox is probably a similar situation. Now the Wii U, okay, the Wii U probably doesn't have as big of a digital marketplace. You mm. know, St- Steam's the same as the PS4 and Xbox One. Huge marketplace. It's really hard to discover games there. So Wii U, what's the situation with that? Why did it not sell on the Wii U? Well, the Wii U had an issue with digital distribution. I think a lot of people, like myself included, I didn't pay for anything digitally on the Wii U. You know, because with the way Nintendo was doing digital distribution during the time, it was all tied to the console. So if something happens to my console, yeah, there is technically a way where you can contact them to get it, but it's a pain in the butt. And it's a lot of effort, and everything is on you to get that game back. The other platforms don't work like that. You just sign into your account, boom, just re-download it. You know, it's no big deal. Um, I think people kind of realize that. Plus, the Wii U had more limited storage, especially if you had the 8-gig model, and you download the required patch that's 5.5 gigs. So you have, like, 2 gigs left. So, so yeah, you're not going to download a lot of games with two gigs. You know, you're using that storage very carefully, especially if you want to download DLC for Mario Kart 8 or something like that. So, but the Wii or the Switch, yes, it still has a limited amount of storage, but the expandable storage is very inexpensive. You don't have huge patches that eat up into that storage. You know, it does have, you do have patches, but they don't eat nearly as much of that storage. So you have a lot more room to download the games. Plus the marketplace is a lot smaller. There's only like, I don't think there's even 100 games on the on the Switch right now. I think it's like in the 80 range if you add up everything that you can download right now. So it's a lot easier to find a game like this on the market. So I think that's that's why it's been selling better. is because it's had the right audience already baked into the system Plus, since there's not a lot of market competition, it stands out a lot better. Mm-hmm. Yeah, that's my theory anyways. Subscribe to the DP and me on the iTunes. Do now. Get to the chopper. Get cookie down now.
there is a multiplayer mod available for the Nintendo 64 version of Super Mario 64 that allows you to play with up to 23 other people. And it also introduces characters like Waluigi into the game. This is just crazy. Have you seen this multiplayer mod? No, I haven't heard of it at all, honestly. Dude, it is... Uh, just look for, like, Super Mario 64 multiplayer. I mean, it, on YouTube. It's insane. Um, the, the craziness with this. And you could play as Princess Peach, and you could play as Wario, and uh, Luigi, and Toad. And it's just so crazy, you know? Like, mm. why? Why is there a multiplayer mod for Mario 64? That's one thing that kind of gets me. A lot of people go and they they praise mods and things like that, which, you know, I'm all for. I'm all about trying to extend a game's life, for sure. Mm -hmm. But at the same time, some some... It just seems like some of these things are just like experiments and things that they do and they're seeing probably trying to see how far they can actually take the technology or they want to try to do what they can with it just to see if they can break it or something i, I don't know it, it just it kind of comes to mind i'm like you know especially when you're doing it with a nintendo property like you mentioned before nintendo's probably going to shut it down when they get word of it which they probably already have but at the same time it's just like man some people just come up with some of the strangest things to be able to put into mm -hmm. a game that gets some they get such a large amount of attention like some like say for example some really weird mods and say skyrim or fallout 4 or something like that it's just and so, some of them just get so much attention but they're just the strangest things and i guess that's kind of one of the one of these these things in a way in a way when mario 64 came out it kind of had somewhat of an open worldish aspect to it at least at that point in time and i mean yeah you had your loading screens and whatnot when you were going to different areas but i really don't know i'll have to look up some video footage of this because i've honestly never heard of this until now yeah now if i remember right i know super mario 64 ds you can play as multiple characters like you had Wario and Luigi and uh, Yoshi that you could play as in that, but mm -hmm. I don't think that they had multiplayer, did it? Um, oh, it did. No, oh, it no. did. No, yeah. It did? yeah, apparently okay. it did have a multiplayer. I guess. Um, I guess it's not like what we would expect as multiplayer out of it, though. I guess it worked differently. So that, that's kind of weird, but. But yeah, I guess that's really interesting still. But this is like the actual legit Mario 64, where you can play with up to 23 other people. Exactly. And uh, that's really, that's just she's so chaotic, you know? <laughs> yeah, it seems like it would be. It seems like a lot of people would be jumping on each like, other. Like, like, like would, everybody, would everybody have their own camera? Or is it like one camera and every, you have the 24 players running around in that zone? That's That would be chaotic. Yeah, that would be crazy. Uh, I guess you could say maybe if you do it in certain areas of the game, you can kind of have like a weird semi-impromptu Smash Brothers in 3D kind of thing yeah, going on. Yeah, but... yeah. That's, yeah, that's probably true. <laughs> Man, maybe that's, maybe that's the idea behind this, but uh, that's still really interesting. Um, but let's talk about some things that are not interesting. Subscribe to the DPNME on the iTunes. Do now! Get to the chopper! Get cookie down! Now!